Hey, this is Lester Martin from Starburst Academy, and I'm going to do a quick video enabling the cash service and the things that come with that cash service. So let me just tell you a little bit about it first. The cash service is kind of an umbrella set of tools, and really what it's going to help most of us uh, focus on and do is have two of these caching strategies. One of them is just classical materialized views, allowing us to create in the hive or the iceberg connectors, um, the ability to you know create a materialized view as, and keep that updated. And additionally with that, especially in that hive connector, we do have some automated uh, activities and configuration that we can create and set up when we define a materialized view to take care of uh, periodic refreshes automatically, incremental updates, things of that nature. So we're gonna turn all that stuff on and enable it, we need the caching service, and I'll show you what we need for that in just a few minutes. Another big feature is table scan redirections. And this is holistic. This is a, uh, so if uh, materialized views, as you'll see in a, uh, shortly here, materialized views are something a user could create. The table scan redirection is actually gonna be something that an administrator is gonna set up. And we're gonna pick you know, some number of tables and we're going to say how good, how long a, a cache copy of the entire table would be good for. And then when queries run against the actual table, if there's a valid uh, cache available that's still you know within boundaries of acceptability and that stuff, it's actually going to read from that redirection. So to get started, you know there's quite a bit, quite a good stuff, quite a few good links in this information, including you know what kind of changes I'm going to do my changes. In a Kubernetes environment, I'm running in AWS's uh, EKS environment. I have a cluster up and running. So I'm going to do these steps in a few minutes here around enabling the service, maybe enabling materialized views on the catalogs themselves, and then test it all out. But before I do all that, I'm going to do some initial setup that's going to matter uh, for our environment. So let's see what I can take care of here for us. All right, so I got a running Starburst Enterprise um, up and running here, and I need to log in as a um, bit of an administrator here. So let me get back and logged in here. Okay, I think I'm in, perfect. And I'm in my sysadmin role, which is the role I absolutely wanna be in there. So cancel that. Now, to get going, um, I'm just doing the things that we need to do here in the UI. And the primary thing well, we need to do is, especially for the materialized views here in a few minutes, we're gonna need to be able to create a materialized view and that underlying materialization, if that makes any sense, the actual underlying hidden table that we're gonna leverage needs to be created for us. So let me plug in a few values here from some information I have in the background here. And then I'll run that for us, copy this. And what am I doing? I'm saying, hey, I have an S3 bucket and I'm just creating, uh, I want within that S3 bucket, I want to store my cache values. So I'm actually creating a schema. So let's run this here, create a schema in my Hive uh, catalog. You see on the left here, create this call the schema cache. And if all goes well, we can look inside a Hive over here and there's a cache schema. Nothing's in that. This is going to be the hidden location that the materialized view stores its data, not necessarily its metadata about the table name or the materialized view name, but the underlying you know, materialized table, a couple different names that people call that by. All right, so we got that out of the way. After this, you know, for the most part, we need to go create some, some roles. We need to make sure that we're gonna be in good shape here a little bit later. So I'm gonna create a role and we'll call this role uh, the caching service role and you know if i had to put a quick message in their description maybe something like that it's the service role uh, we're going to reference this role a little bit later and the properties that we do set up uh, for for our helm deployment for kubernetes deployment so in this caching service i need to give it uh, a variety of permissions here so i'll try to run you through those and just tell you what i'm doing as i go I need to add a privilege and I'm gonna add a table privilege to start with. And what am I trying to drive to? I'm trying to drive to that schema 
uh, that we just talked about a minute ago. So I'm going to go to the Hive catalog. I'm going to look at the schema called cache. And within that, I want to be able to s absolutely everything in there. I want to have access to it. I want to use um, and allow. And then I just want to turn this up. So this is like a system. I'm going to put a system account in this role. And that system account uh, will be able to create, delete, all that kind of good stuff. All right, so I'm going to save that privilege. It's going to say, yep, that's in there. Let's add another privilege. What's another one we need to do? Well, we're going to do... Uh, an example of did that take save privilege yep yep oh started all started over for a new one that's fair enough um we're gonna want to set up uh, re uh redirection table uh, table scan redirection so we need to be able to uh, configure what we're going to point to i already know my first example so i need to give this service account permissions to that table so there is a uh, uh, mysql database out there and it has a schema called uh, public, I believe, is what I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to go ahead and very, be very specific. Uh, the table called orders, all the columns in there. This is the one I'm going to do with the redirect. The kind of permanent, kind of hidden, uh, not permanent, I guess, uh, abstract, hidden, cache copy of something else. So I'm going to do an allow. And I think I just need to do a select. And you'll let make sure this service, when needed, can read this data. And we'll see that a little bit more. So added that privilege. Let's add another one. This one, probably, we need to make sure that, that this service account can read all of the uh, kind of metadata out there. So we're going to say system, and there is inside system, there is a field, a schema called metadata. We want to see that metadata. We want to see all the tables within that. We want to do an allow. I think we just need to, I think we just need to do a select there as well. It needs to be able to read all the various metadata across the system. I want to add another privilege. So these are those setups that you really kind of need to do before you go off and create uh, the changes in your config files and so on. All right, so I've got a new one coming up here. Now this one, we, th this service account needs to have access to catalog session properties and session setting properties. I can only do one at a time. So I'm going to say um, uh, for all catalogs, um, do an allow set. We're, what are we setting? We're setting the cat they're able to set catalog session properties. Fair enough. And we should be able to do that for the uh, the other one. So I'll go back to the top. Another other. This time we'll use um, system session properties. I believe is the second one here. Yeah, yeah. So I did, we did the catalog and now we do system. Should be the same thing. We want to say all properties we should be able to play with. Again, this is a pretty powerful system account we just want to make sure he has access to do these various things so those two should be in place now this one may or may not um, make sense in your installation i'm going to go ahead and just overkill i'm going to say i want to give permission for this system you this this role which i'll put the, the system account the caching service in i want to let it, i want it to be able to um uh, execute queries. Now, this is probably a permission that's already there from your public account, but just kind of overkill in case it's not there or someone, you know, took uh, that feature uh, away from us. That actually should be all the the permissions that we want. In fact, if we just kind of look at the details, there we go. We should have a whole bunch that we created. That's what we're seeing uh, kind of listed here. The different permissions and whatnot that we created. Uh, you see, every one of these individually showing up in this case. So what I want to also do now is I want to assign some users to this um, to this role. And the user I want to assign is just good old fashioned caching uh, service. Now, you know, you need to have that user. I'm doing a, a kind of pretty low tech solution here. I'm using the, the password file uh, authentic authentication. Um, that's not an ideal one, probably LDAP or something else like that would be good. But if you look right here, I have a caching service. So I have a, my system account embedded uh, right there. Let's see if I can get back to my... There we go. All right, so what did I do? I think we're ready at this point. We'll take a, a close this one off, open another one in a second here. We just did some setup in the UI that ensures that the caching service user will be, will be part of a role that role will have plenty enough permissions to do all the cool stuff like saving data 
for materialized views as well as um, uh, having access to go read from the, uh, the table scan redirections. And it's actually going to put everything back in that same kind of cache schema that I identified earlier.